When most people hear the word science fiction, they picture a certain image. Usually, you think of something like Star Wars, an intergalactic adventure with alien life, space travel, and cool spaceships. Or they picture a futuristic society with incredibly advanced technology like robots or time travel. It's not often that people picture science fiction as a subgenre of horror. Or, if they do, the common concept of sci-fi horror is rather limited. In the big sci-fi horror movies, like the classics Alien and Predator, or the more recent Life, an alien creature often attacks humans on Earth or in space. However, Blade Runner is different. It's a classic science fiction movie, but it isn't seen as a horror movie. Instead of the monster being an alien creature attacking humans without any regard for their identities, the monsters in, the Blade, in Blade Runner are human-like androids, complex characters that have multi-dimensional relationships with the protagonist. My essay argues that Blade Runner is sci-fi horror, and that it opens the door for many other science fiction movies to be considered sci-fi horror as well. The film opens on a dark, dismal, polluted Los Angeles. Released in 1982, the movie is set in a dystopian future where the Tyrell Corporation advanced robot evolution far enough to create androids nearly identical to humans, but they're even stronger and more agile. The androids are called replicants, and they're used as slaves by the humans in the society. However, some escape and stop at nothing to retain their freedom, whether that requires them to seduce a human or to shoot one in the face. The main character, Deckard, is a retired Blade Runner, or a police officer tasked with tracking down escaped androids, or replicants, and killing them. In my essay, I argue that Blade Runner contains elements of all three of King's levels of horror. Let's start with the lowest level, revulsion. King refers to it as the gag reflex, or the gross-out factor. Revulsion is an impulsive disgust triggered by showing or describing something so vile that it causes a physical repulsion. It's the extreme gore that authors and directors use in order to disturb the audience on a physical level. Ridley Scott, the director of Blade Runner, is no stranger to revulsion. The film is rated R for a reason. Each replicant dies a bloody, gruesome death. And the main replicant, Roy, is a merciless killer, as shown in this clip of him murdering his creator, Tyrell. King describes it, horror invites a physical reaction by showing us something which is physically wrong. Authors and directors create this feeling of horror by revealing something physically unnatural, offending to modern society, and threatening. Monsters fall under this category. Carroll argues that the monsters in horror stories are regarded by the human characters as abnormal, as disturbances of the natural order. The monsters in Blade Runner are the androids, and although the replicants themselves may not be abnormal to the Blade Runner universe, the rebellious desire to kill is. This disturbing creature creates a feeling of horror by introducing a threat that pr produces a physical reaction of fear in the audience. Terror is the finest level. It's completely psychological. According to King, it attacks the place where you, the viewer or the reader, live at your most primitive level. Essentially, terror is a level of fear created by the audience's own subconscious, whether it stems from a personal, internalized fear, or from the viewer or reader's imagination. Blade Runner utilizes two common tropes of the horror genre to create terror, phobic pressure points and the uncanny. Phobic pressure points play upon and express fears which exist across a wide spectrum of people. Such fears are often political, economic, and psychological rather than supernatural. These fears mirror the political and social culture of the time period and terrify the audience on a subconscious level because they are based in reality. The national phobic pressure point that Blade Runner targets is the fear of the other. The movie was released in 1982, at a time when alarm about the Cold War spiked. There was lots of fear in the American society of communists, especially communist spies. Fear about communists, a physically undiscernible threat, infiltrating society terrified Americans. This was reflected in the film. Replicants are nearly impossible to identify. In fact, 
trained professionals have to use the void conf test to identify a replicant. It's your birthday. Someone gives you a calfskin wallet. I wouldn't accept it. Also, I'd report the person who gave it to me to the police. You've got a little boy. He shows you his butterfly collection, plus the killing jar. I take him to the doctor. The replicants in Blade Runner create this effect of the uncanny, especially the replicant Rachel. Rachel doesn't know that she's an android, although Deckard suspects she is an android almost immediately. However, his suspicions aren't actually confirmed until later in the movie. As a result, the audience experiences the uncanny from the unsettling uncertainty over whether Rachel, Rachel is android or human. With all these techniques combined, Blade Runner utilizes all three levels of horror, revulsion, horror, and terror. Although it departs greatly from the traditional sci-fi horror, it proves to effectively scare its audiences, and it proves that the scope of science fiction horror is much wider than expected.